Hello and welcome, my name is Xander. I will be your instructor through this tutorial. Now this tutorial is actually part of a whole course which you can access the first stages for free here on YouTube. Now in this tutorial, I might mention resources and other tutorials. Do check out the link in the video description which will take you to the playlist and also there will be a link to the resources so that you can access and follow along here on YouTube. Now, if you like this course, you found it useful and you want to take that next step, you can find this course over at Udemy. All the links to the resources can be found in the video description. Now, don't forget also subscribe to the channel for weekly promotions, discounts and free course giveaways. In this course, we are going to be utilizing Visual Studio Code for demonstrating all of the SQL code that we're going to learn. Now you don't have to utilize Visual Studio Code, but of course it is probably going to be more beneficial for you to follow along using the same code editor, Visual Studio Code, that we are using throughout the course. This tutorial is aimed at anyone new to Visual Studio Code. I will take you through how to download, install, and then start using Visual Studio Code. Now, unlike some other courses, programming languages, which require us to have a, a deeper understanding of Visual Studio Code features, we won't need many Visual Studio Code features in this course. Visual Studio Code provides us a, a nice, convenient user interface for us to interact with our database, save and manage our SQL code, and includes a, a terminal so we can actually run and execute our SQL code easily. So whether you're on Windows or Mac, open up your browser, find your search engine and type in Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio Code download. So that should take you to the Visual Studio Code homepage, code.visualstudiocode.com or code.visualstudio.com, sorry. From there, if we navigate to the page, now you can see that I'm using Mac and I will be demonstrating all the commands and course using this Mac operating system, but it's going to be very much the same if you are working on Windows and indeed Linux. Now here, because I am using Mac OS, you can see that I'm provided the Mac OS download. If you are on Windows, you will see here download for Windows. So all that you're going to need to do here is click on the download link, let it download. Once Visual Studio Code is finished, if you're using a Windows operating system, you can just double click and work through the installation guide. It should be a simple case of next, next, next. There are no special features or functions that you need to select. You can simply click on next until the end and then the Visual Studio Code software should be installed. Now, if you're working on the Mac, you can simply double click the zip download. That will then show you the application or extract the application here, and you can then drag that over to applications and then it will reside and be open from the applications area. So I'll just go ahead and remove that. Once the software has been installed on the Mac, we can press command space and search for Visual Studio Code to open Visual Studio Code or else go to the application area and open up the application. On Windows, of course, you can navigate to Start and All Programs and access Visual Studio Code from that point. When you first open Visual Studio Code, you should have or should see the Welcome tab. And from here, you can open up new projects. Now, how this is going to work in Visual Studio Code, if you've not used this before, is that typically before you open up Visual Studio Code, you would create some sort of project folder somewhere on your hard drive, all right? So, uh, we can open up or create a new folder. I'm just going to create a new folder on my desktop just very quickly. So I'll go ahead and create a new folder on my desktop. Let's just call this a project. Now in this course, you will probably be downloading uh, folders. So you'll probably open that folder up in Visual Studio Code, but let's uh, just pretend that that is something that we've downloaded from this course, an artifact or the source code from the course. Once you have done that, the first thing you're going to do in Visual Studio Code when you first open it is connect it to that folder or that project. So from the tab here, we can press open. At the top in file, we can open up a folder. I realize you can't see the top ribbon in this screen, but at the top you will find file and then open folder and you go ahead and open the folder. 
Right, so I selected open folder. I found the folder on my desktop and now my folder is open. So on the left hand side here, you can see there's a number of different options. Uh, you may accidentally click on some of these different options. Uh, so uh, just make sure that you move back to the Explorer icon at the top left here and that would take you to the project files that are currently in the folder that we've just opened. And from there, that is where we are going to work primarily in this course. Right, so what you will find in folders that you download in source code, there will be a bunch of folders and inside of it you will find files. Typically they're going to be uh, SQL files. Okay, so it's going to look a little bit like that. And then inside of here you will find or see the SQL code. So maybe uh, select, select all from users. So that is a SQL. Uh, so here we have a basic SQL statement. Okay, so we are going to need a terminal. That's going to be one of our, the primary uh, features of this tool that we're going to use. Now, if I drag my mouse near the bottom, you can see it turns into an arrow up. That indicates the fact I'm in a position where I can select and drag. So select being the mouse button down and then drag up. So here I can access the terminal. Now I can use a shortcut. If I go up to the top ribbon, which you can't see, and select the view option. I can see here that it allows me to open and close the terminal exactly the same way. But on the right hand side here, you can see there is a shortcut and you can use that shortcut to access the terminal quickly. And I will be using that. So on the Mac, I press control and the button above the control button, uh, the title button, and that will open and close. So I hold down control and then I tap the title button and that will open and close the terminal. If you're on the Windows, if you're on a Windows operating system, it's going to be very similar. Right, so that's how we're going to open and close the terminal. If you get lost like this, then just use the dot, 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 move back to terminal. So that's the terminal. And that is going to allow us to type in commands, access our database and run SQL commands. Now, a handy feature to know about Visual Studio Code is that you can select file from the menu and select auto save. And that's just going to save you from having to press save all the time. Every time you type, it's just going to automatically save it. Now, there is a whole bunch of settings. Uh, something that might be useful to know is that you can press control or command and press plus and minus on the keyboard. And that will allow you to scale in and out if you need to do that. That's useful to know. And you can also go to file or sorry, code and settings. So settings can be accessed in multiple ways using code and settings or at the bottom left hand corner here, you've got this cog wheel. You can also access the settings that way. In settings, I'm going to type in zoom. There are hundreds of settings here, but something that might be useful is zoom. And then I've selected wheel mouse zoom. And what that's going to enable me to do is use the command button and the wheel mouse to actually zoom in and out of my code. And that can be really useful. Something else that can be useful, uh, the terminal sometimes is a little bit too big or small. A bit further down here, it will allow me also to select the terminal mouse wheel zoom. So I've selected that too. So I can actually zoom in and out in my terminal as well. And that also can be very handy. If you didn't want zoom, you can look through the settings because oh, sometimes you mess this up. So you can look through the settings and actually uh, change the scale of that. So um, if I type in terminal font here, for example, I can change the actual font size. OK, so that's a few settings that you might like to configure. Other than that, you can see that we can move this around if we want to. And sometimes you might want to select multiple files. So let's create a, a new a file. Sometimes you want to have two files side by side. So what I can do is select the option at the top right hand corner here, which will then allow me if I just drag that across a bit, you can see that option at the top right hand corner. That's going to allow us to split screen so that we can view two code files side by side. So that's pretty much all of the features that we are going to be using in this course anything else you will see me use and i will explain it as we go along now something else before i leave you might be asking well, why does your screen look 
completely different. Why does your UI look completely different uh, in terms of uh, the visual elements? Well, I use a theme called Night Owl. So if you select themes, or extension, sorry, on the left hand side here, just type in Night Owl. Night Owl will appear, select Night Owl, and then go ahead and install. And from that point, you can then select the different themes that you might want to use. There are hundreds of other themes that you might want to select. Uh, this is just one of many. In this tutorial, we learned how to install Visual Studio Code and get started working with Visual Studio Code. Now, remember that the source code for every single module can be found at the end of each module of this course. You can go ahead and download that code, which should be in a zip format, extract, and then open up Visual Studio Code, point it to the code, and open up that project folder. From there, you'll be able to view all of the code. Like I said, if I do use any other features that I haven't introduced in this tutorial, I will introduce them as we go along. I can't think off the top of my head there are any. It should be as simple as that. We are going to be using some other software throughout this course. I will introduce that separately as we work through the course.